Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now my next guest, Tommy Makonjuola, is known in the UK as the vegan Nigerian and little wonder. She's on a mission to make Nigerian cuisines healthier and more accessible to the world. For nearly a decade now, she's been working flat out to try to break down negative perceptions around the plant-based industry. And in doing so, she's been putting a unique spin on typical Nigerian dishes. She's the founder of the food site, the Vegan Nigerian, and she's also the author of the Plantain Cookbook. All this aimed at trying to achieve her quest of shaking up vegan stereotypes and getting more Nigerians off their typical meat-eating Nigerian diet and more interested in vegan cuisines. The Vegan Nigerian for me has developed into this platform where I'm able to inspire people about Nigerian cuisine. If this is your first time, I run cookery classes. I think the best part about it is just seeing people from different walks of life come together and realize that they don't have to give up on their own cultures in order to live this plant-based lifestyle. I probably spend almost every waking hour thinking about food, to be honest. <laughs> Well, I have to say, looking at those dishes, they look absolutely delicious. Well, for more on all of that, uh, Tommy Makonjula, known to many as the vegan Nigerian, joins me now on the line from the UK. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Um, first of all, just tell us what veganism is. I mean, what's the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian? Hi. So, um, first of all, thank you very much for having me on today. So a vegan is an individual who um, abstains from consuming any form of animal products. So the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian is that uh, whereas a vegetarian might still eat some dairy, some eggs, some even still eat fish, um, vegans absolutely abstain from all those animal products and it even goes beyond food. Um, vegans also avoid uh, buying any clothes or buying any products that contain any animal products. Well, I mean, coming from Nigeria, perhaps you need to advise them to tread softly and become vegetarians first before they become vegans. Because, I mean, it might be a bit of a challenge, uh, you know, as you mentioned in one of your interviews. I mean, you know, a Nigerian background means a meat based or as they call it locally, protein based um, meal and, and it's highly prized. I mean, let's start with you though. Why did you turn vegan and away from meat? For me, it was a number of different reasons. Um, first of all, I wanted to improve my health. Eating a healthy, balanced vegan diet is one of the best things you can do to just improve your digestion, improve your your general health and well-being, um, but also the more research I did into the impact that animal agriculture has on our climate, on our planet, um, and also the ways that animals are treated in industrial farming just didn't sit right with me. So a lot of these things came together and uh, yeah, it's been almost a decade of living this way and I haven't looked back since. Well, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's, that's very interesting and very, um encouraging but i mean let's face it that there's nothing quite like that little piece of meat on your spoon of rice is there i mean it just doesn't taste the same does it i mean please convince me to the contrary so i mean this is a very uh, common misconception that a lot of people have about vegan food that it isn't as tasty it isn't as filling or nutritious but you know it couldn't be further from the truth um the thing that most people actually gravitate towards is the taste, right? It's the seasoning and it's the spices you use in the food. And in addition to that is the texture. And a lot of plant-based meat alternatives can give you that same meaty texture that you desire in your meals, um, but without you know, the animal products, the cholesterol and 
uh, all the other things that come with consuming animal products. So you can definitely still enjoy a lot of the meals. I mean, my blog and the cookbooks that I've written are a real testament to that and real proof that you don't actually have to give up on any of your cultural foods or foods that you're familiar with that you love um, to follow this lifestyle. Just a few adaptations needed. Obviously, you have to give up on meat, don't you? I mean, so that's, a, that's an enormous sacrifice. But I mean, the, the, what I'm trying to understand, though, is from a physiological point of view, I mean, isn't meat a necessary protein for human beings? Because, I mean, I, I've, got, I've read sort of conflicting reports mm. from different sort of uh, medical societies and so on who say that a certain amount of meat... Um, whether it is a, a fish type of meat or chicken or, or, you know, beef or that kind of thing. But a little amount of it is necessary in order for us to get all the vitamins that we need. What's your reaction to that? So I don't fully agree with that, um, only because uh, based on the research that I've done and, you know, after so many years of following this diet, I know firsthand that a plant-based vegan diet can give you all the protein that you actually require. Um, it's very, very difficult to have a protein deficiency, even as a vegan. Um, and so for anyone who is considering this lifestyle, I do encourage them to do their research to make sure that they are getting the plant-based sources of protein that they need. Now. Um, if you want to go a little bit deeper into talking about the amino acids and the protein chains, there are certain ways that you can combine your foods to make sure that you are um, getting all of the protein that you need. Um, so if I could give you a few examples of um, plant-based sources, we have beans, we have all kinds of legumes like chickpeas, lentils, we have nuts and seeds. And even you know everyday common vegetables, most people don't realize that they contain a percentage of protein. Um, and so as long as you're eating a variety of meals, a variety of dishes, um, there it's very, very difficult to uh, have a protein deficiency. And so what a lot of people um, think they need from meat, you can actually get from plants. And uh, I don't know if you've seen a documentary called Game Changers, but they did a study that showed that athletes and um, other sort of bodybuilding professionals who were on a plant-based diet were able to perform even better than a lot of their counterparts who were on a meat-heavy diet. And so just a little bit of research is required um, for anyone to know that on this lifestyle, you can absolutely get all the protein that you need. Well, I mean, beyond the research and all the sort of the deeper, heavier things that you talked about, which are obviously, you know, have great merit, um, I suppose on, on, a, on a grunt level, I mean, you, you've got the issue of taste. I mean, you know, carnivorous people like to taste, you know, dead animals. I mean, you know, you, 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 how do you compensate for that? I mean, you talked about some of the things in your cookbook, for example, that, that sort of might take the place of that. But I mean, that the crucial element of taste, I don't see chickpeas or beans ever tasting like a piece of steak. No, I mean, <laughs> you are very right there that they have their own unique tastes. Um, but again, to go back to what I said earlier on, what gives food its flavor is actually the season and the spices you use. If you cook a plain piece of chicken, boil it in some water, and you try to eat that, there is nothing appetizing about that piece of chicken at all. What actually gives it the taste are the spices you add, is the thyme, it's the curry, you know, it's the chili. Um, and so if you are um, able to replicate a lot of those tastes, um, but with plant-based ingredients, you can still enjoy those dishes. Um, and then as you say, yes, chickpeas have their own distinct taste, but um, there have been amazing advancements in terms of um, meat alternatives in the vegan movement. So even if you are not eating um, whole food sources such as mushrooms, which are naturally very meaty, or aubergine, um, which really give a nice meaty texture to dishes, you can even go down the route of trying um, something we call seitan, which is made with wheat gluten. Um, it mimics the taste, of the look and the texture of meat to a tea. Like you will not be able to tell the difference in my opinion. Um, even things like tofu cooked in a certain way can mimic 
the look and the texture of meat as well. So um, if you think you're going to be missing out on that, um, then I can assure you that that is not the case. Right. Mimic the look and the texture, but not the taste, because I've tried tofu. It doesn't taste quite the same, let's face it. But your assessment, though... <laughs> no, sorry, go on. What were you saying? I said you haven't tried my tofu yet, that's why. Well, I, I shall make it a point to try it next time I'm in your neighbourhood. But your assessment, then, and advice and crusade is to get as many people as possible to turn away from meat-based diets and as far as you're concerned there ought not to be a halfway house. Mm. I don't know if I completely agree with that because you know I have family and friends who um, have not fully embraced the vegan lifestyle and my whole approach is why don't you make a few adjustments make a few changes I went vegan overnight, virtually within a space of a week, from a meat-eating diet to a completely vegan diet. But that might not be the case for other people. Some people might need to transition slowly. And there's absolutely room and space for that. What I'm most concerned about is really showing people and highlighting the impact that our food choices and our habits really have on you know, the wider context of our planet, the wider context of the future of this climate. Um, that's a really, really important part of this conversation as well. Um, and so if people can start to see that um, by eating more sustainably, by reducing their meat intake, maybe slowly transition into a more plant-based diet will have a more positive impact on the planet, on other people and individuals, then I think that's, you know, that's something worth crusading about, as you say. Um, but then at the end of the day, it's up to everyone to make up their minds. And I will always be here to assist anyone who wants to transition or who wants to sort of explore this path and this journey. Well, I want to talk about that very important uh, thing that you brought up, the, the impact on the environment of eating less uh, meat and, and things like that. Um, but there is also, I mean, you just from, a, from, a, from your own personal experience point of view, how, what difference, I, I know you touched on this briefly, but just expand on it a little. What difference has it made in your life? I mean, let's talk about things that people care about. Do you feel healthier? Do you, do you feel lighter? I mean, do you go to, for your sort of um, medical checks and so on and, and you're ticking all the boxes? Uh, I mean, do, do you feel younger and look younger and things like that? Those are things that people want to hear. It's true. It's true. I mean, uh, you know, you can talk about the climate, you can talk about the animals from here to eternity, but I think personal health is also a really big aspect of this lifestyle. And um, I can categorically say that I have experienced amazing benefits since transitioning to this diet. Um, I can share that I have lost over 50 pounds of weight very naturally without having to try hard, without having to really change much about the way I eat. Um, aside from the fact that I went vegan, of course. Um, and then one of the main reasons why I even went vegan in the first place is because I found myself as a 20, 21 year old, lacking in energy, feeling sluggish, even though I would get eight hours of sleep, I would still wake up feeling very tired. And I knew that my digestion and my, the way I was eating was having an impact on my energy levels. And so going vegan really really did help in all of those areas i mean my digestion is fantastic now my skin cleared up um, again i lost a lot of weight and so i've personally um, experienced a lot of those benefits and i do go for regular checkups um, everything is all right you know i had a history of anemia as a child and I haven't had any flare up since, you know, since going vegan, which was one of the, you know, the big worries that, oh, will I be getting enough iron? Will I be getting all the nutrients? But that hasn't been an issue at all for me. Um, and so, yeah, I would encourage everyone to kind of look at these positives, look at these benefits and see um, if it's something that they want for themselves. Okay, please stay with us. We're going to come back and talk with you some more. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our exploration of vegan foods with the publisher of the Plantain Cookbook, Tommy Macanjula. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Inyagolu. Now, if like millions of others, you are a typical Nigerian with a meat-eating diet, spare a thought for what it takes to get that piece of flesh onto your plate and in your fridge. Could you go vegan for a month, perhaps longer? Could you face up to the animals on your plate, your fridge, your wardrobe, and your skin? Well, today we are attempting to understand what the growing vegan trend is all about. And my guest is the crusading African, Tommy Makonjula, known in the UK as the vegan Nigerian, who's helping us explore the world of cuisines, diets, fitness, and animal welfare. I left Nigeria when I was 14 and moved to London with my parents. I left behind my old home, my school and my friends, but I brought with me my love of Nigerian food. Food is more than sustenance and it's more than pleasure. Food connects us to our own personal history and it roots us in our culture. My mother taught me everything I know about traditional Nigerian cooking and while my dad threw in some amazing hacks and flavor combinations. And together, these became the building blocks of my own culinary explorations. When I became vegan eight years ago, I, like everyone else, worried that I would lose the foods I loved and what they meant to me. But taking animal products out of meals doesn't mean you lose those familiar flavors, tastes, and textures. In fact, I got to keep all the best bits, the foods that nourish me and connect me to Nigeria, while at the same time staying true to my principles. Well, it all sounds jolly brilliant, doesn't it? And the vegan Nigerian, Tommy Makanjula, is still with me on the line from the UK. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. Um, you, you talked about, before we went on the break, uh, you talked about the environment and climate change and all the rest of it. Does eating less meat and more plant-based foods um, help to protect the environment? Yes, it absolutely does. Um, so Oxford University did a study in 2018 that showed that animal agriculture is one of the leading causes of climate change. Um, now, you would say, why isn't this being shouted from the rooftops? Why aren't we hearing more about this? Why isn't there more of a, an encouragement and a shift towards a plant based diet? I mean, and those are all very good questions, you know. Um, I think this is one area that uh, a lot of people don't realize when they think vegan. They immediately just think of the food and they think of maybe the health aspects, but the climate is a very big part of it as well. Um, now, people make the argument and they say, well, these big corporations should be held responsible should be held responsible for making the bigger change, wider societal changes. Um, but I'm more of the school, I guess, of personal accountability as well. I think we can all take a stand. We can all vote with our money, with the way we spend. If we're not feeding into these industries, then these industries cannot continue um, producing in the way that they are. And uh, so it all has a knock on effect. I think the two do work together. The government needs to do more. But as individuals, we can also also sort of make a difference by changing our habits and changing the way we eat. Right. Well, it's interesting um, that you say that because I think it will resonate with a lot of people once you start linking it to uh, climate change and the environment, particularly a lot of young people. But I mean, let me ask you this. If we consumed more plant based foods, wouldn't we also be dealing a blow to the environment? because the consumption of plants and fruits and trees would dramatically increase. I mean, imagine a scenario where billions of people around the world are eating more plants and fruits and trees. You'd be taking those plants uh, out of circulation. Wouldn't that affect the absorption of carbon dioxide and all the rest of it, CO2, which leads to global warming? But see, this is where um, sustainable methods need to be put in place. You know, for every tree you cut down, you know, the theory is that you should plant another one immediately. Um, and so the thing about growing plants is that, you know, we have enough space on this planet to grow as much food as we need to feed the population. Why is it that right now the consumption of meat has gone kind of skyrocketed through the roof and yet we still have communities around the world with starving individuals? A lot of the grain, a lot of the plants that are grown in certain parts of the certain parts of the world are actually 
diverted to animal feed. And then the yield from animal agriculture is nowhere near the kind of yield that you would get from uh, using the same piece of land to grow crops. Um, and so that is a very good question, that you, a point that you raise, but um, that's where I think sustainability comes into it. You know, for everything that you're growing and taking away, you need to be putting back. Um, and that is the way that we can kind of keep that cycle going and prevent um, any disastrous knock-on effect. Because what we're doing right now clearly isn't working for the environment. So I would say, why continue in the same way? Why not try something different? Yes, well, people will make the argument about sustainability. Why can't we do the same thing with animals? I mean, in other words, you know, farm them or grow them sustainably. But I think another important element which resonates, I have to say, with me personally is animal cruelty. I mean, the fact that we're, we're killing these animals who are perfectly entitled to life just as we are. Um, I, I have problems with that and the way, particularly in places like Nigeria, the way that animals are treated um, when they're going to the NACA, basically, it's, it's absolutely horrendous and, and I think that something should be done about it. But you've come up with a new cookbook um, which you hope will entice people towards veganism. Tell us about that. Yes, I'm very, very excited about this. I recently published my second cookbook called Vegan Nigerian Kitchen, and it features 100 recipes, uh, all classic recognizable Nigerian meals um, that people will know and love. Or if you're completely new to Nigerian cuisine, it's a really great introduction to our food culture. It's a great introduction to the way we eat, um, but from a plant-based perspective. So it's filled with you know full-page photographs of and really enticing dishes. Uh, it's got some tips and tricks on how to sort of navigate our ingredients, how to shop for our ingredients, but most importantly, how to prepare our ingredients um, so that you're getting tasty, nutritious meals. Um, the book also contains a quick guide to going vegan. Uh, it contains a lovely essay written by my dad as well, so family affair. Um, and all around, I'm just really proud of this project. I'm really proud of um, the impact I believe it can have, the inspiration I think it can give to people um, who want to know what this uh, lifestyle is all about and how they can thrive and actually sustain it. Uh, and you are, of course, a chef in your own right, aren't you? So, so when you promote these dishes, I mean, you know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. I mean, even prior to going vegan, I've been cooking probably since the age of 10. And so that's sort of always been with me. And so when I made the switch to veganism, um, it was a case of honing those skills and honing, you know, that passion for food. Uh, so I did work as a professional vegan chef for a few years in London, um, just to kind of build those skills up, just to learn new techniques as well. And all of those things that I've learned, I've um, applied it to um, my sort of creation of vegan Nigerian meals um, and so it, yeah it's something I'm very passionate about. And um, are you seeing more sort of Nigerians and black people in the UK have you turning towards sort of veganism because I mean I've read somewhere that that you know the idea of a vegan Nigerian is a bit of an oxymoron. Yes, I've heard that one quite a few times, um, especially in the early days of being vegan. But what I've found is, you know, as time has gone on, I've definitely been approached by people online, my online community who have said to me, you know what, I, I'm convinced. I want to try this. I want to do this. Um, and so it's been really positive to see that um, that swing in the right direction, I suppose. Um, and then again, like I said earlier on, even for people who choose not to go fully vegan. Um, I've heard testimonials from people saying that they've cut down on their meat intake. Now maybe they only eat meat once a week or twice a week. Um, and every little helps, you know, every little helps. So uh, it's it's been great to see this movement sort of skyrocket. And it does take a while for ideas to spread. Um, but I think that's why it's important for people to see others who look like them, others from the same culture as them, same background as them, actually doing this and living this and showing that it's actually possible to do it. Okay, Tommy, I want to thank you very much indeed for spending some time with us. Uh, Tommy Makanjuola is known as the Vegan Nigerian, and she's an author, 
and of course a chef and a vegan. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and around the world. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.